Hi. Now, here we've got a question on forming a differential equation and then solving it. So if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll run through the work solution slowly, or you can just fast forward to check your answers. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Well, we've got this spherical balloon then with a radius of r, and what we know is that the rate of increase of the radius then is inversely proportional to the square root of its radius. And with that, I can write down this differential equation. Let's just say given, OK, we're given then that the rate of change of the radius, dr by dt in other words, is inversely proportional. So I'll write the proportionality sign there. But because it's inversely proportional to the square root of the radius, I'll write 1 over the square root of r. And from this, we can form an equation as long as we put in a constant of proportionality. So dr by dt is going to equal that constant k multiplied with 1 over root r, or k over root r. Now, let's just call that equation 1. And I need to work out what this constant is. And what I know is that from this information here, when r is 9, we're told that the radius is increasing, that's dr by dt, equals 1.08 centimetres per second. So let's just put that down here, that when the radius r equals 9, we know that the rate of increase of the radius, that's dr by dt, is equal to 1.08. And so what I can do is substitute this into this equation here, number 1. So just put that down, sub in 1. And if we do that, we end up with dr by dt being 1.08. 1.08 equals the constant k over the square root of 9. And that means that if you multiply by 3, the square root of 9, to 1.08, then therefore k turns out to be 3.24. Now, I can substitute that back in here, and I've got my differential equation. If I now rearrange this, rearrange it so that I get rid of the dt here and move the root r up here, in other words, separate the variables, then I can see that from 1, let's just put it in here, from 1, what we've got is the square root of r, okay, dr, equals k dt, k being 3.24, 3.24 dt. Now, I can't leave it like that. What I need to do is integrate both sides. So slip an integral down there. I could slip an integral that side of the 3.24, but being a constant, I'm going to cut it in there. So we need to solve these two integrals here. So what we've got, therefore, is the integral of root r. Think of it as r to the power half then. At 1 to the power, you're going to get r to the power 3 over 2, 1 and a half. Divide by the new power, 3 over 2, so the 3 goes there and the 2 goes there. Then we've got equals, and if I integrate 3.24 with respect to t, you're basically going to get 3.24t. Okay? Then we need a constant of integration, which can go on either side. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. I'm going to go for the right-hand side, though, plus c. Now I've got to work out what c is, and I can pick up on this fact here, that when t equals 5, r equals 9. So we'll put that in there. When t equals 5, we know that r equals 9. And if I substitute that into... Let's say this equation now, let's call it 2, sub in 2. Then what I've got is therefore 
2 thirds times r, which we know is 9, to the power 3 over 2 equals 3.24 times t, which is 5, plus c. So if I work out each of these terms, subtract this term from both sides, I end up with c equaling 1.8. And then I need to substitute this value back into our equation up here, sub in 2, and what we get is 2 thirds r to the power 3 over 2. In fact, what I'm going to do is rearrange this at the same time. I can see I haven't got much space here. So we'll say sub in 2 and rearrange. Make r the subject. So that would mean that I would multiply both sides here by 3 and divide by 2. That will give me r to the power 3 over 2. And then I need to do the inverse of this, which would be to do everything to the power 2 thirds. Okay, so I'd find that r would equal 3 okay, over 2 times all of 3.24 t plus the c which we've seen is 1.8 and then to all of this remember this would have been r to the power 3 over 2 I now need to do to the power 2 thirds okay so sorry about that that I've just jumped the stages for you but I can see I'm not going to get this in here so cleaning this up we therefore have r equals, well if you do 3 over 2 times 3.24 then you'll find you get 4.86. So you've got 4.86t and then 3 over 2, 1.5 in other words, times 1.8 gives you 2.7. And then all of that is to the power 2 thirds. So hope you've been able to follow that. That brings us to the end now of that part.